since the Philippines is an attractive tourist destination. It's no wonder thousands of foreigners visit this country every single day. Most of them are tourists who plan to stay for a few weeks before heading to their next tourist destination in Southeast Asia. But why do tourists choose the Philippines over other Southeast Asian countries? The Philippines is particularly attractive to foreign vloggers for various reasons. The following are the main reasons why foreign vloggers choose the Philippines. Reason number one, and this is the main reason. Filipino viewers. Reason number two, affordable living. Vlogging can be expensive, especially if it's your full-time job. But the Philippines offers an affordable cost of living. Number three, warm and welcoming people. One of the main reasons uh, vloggers come to the Philippines is the warm and welcoming Filipino people. Number four, cultural diversity. Number five, breathtaking scenery. The Philippines boasts some of the most breathtaking natural scenery in the world. Number six, adventure opportunities. Adventure is always around the corner in the Philippines. Number seven, vibrant festivals. The Philippines is known for its vibrant and colorful festivals. Number eight, food adventures. Filipino cuisine is a delicious blend of flavors. Number 10, hidden gems. The Philippines is full of hidden gems. Number 11, language learning opportunities. The country's proficiency in English makes it an ideal place for vloggers to learn new languages. Number 12, dive paradise. For underwater enthusiasts, the Philippines is a paradise for diving and snorkeling. Number 13, unique transportation modes. Number 14, Island hopping. Number 15. Ease of communication. I've discussed in my previous videos how foreigners insult Filipinos and the Philippines. Most of the insults were direct. They were based on superficial things like skin color, as in the case of Lucy Lu, or accent in the case of Lee Di Ha, mocking the Filipino accent. As previously discussed, stereotypes linked to the Philippines and its people stem from economic disparities. This implies that foreigners may tend to look down on Filipinos if they hold the stereotype that the country is poor. I also mentioned that if the Philippines were as affluent as Singapore, foreigners would likely have different and largely positive stereotypes about Filipinos. They would say good things about Filipinos, and those negative stereotypes would not exist. Foreign vloggers can be seen as responding to a market demand from the Filipino audience, catering to their preferences and needs. What preferences? Preferences such as reacting to, say, Filipino singers. They should not be entirely blamed for seizing a lucrative opportunity to make money in the process. If there is demand, there will be supply. Similarly, the Filipino audience cannot be blamed entirely for seeking global validation because they are victims of decades of deprivation due to corruption, colonization, and many other factors. The focus of this video is on the top 10 foreign vloggers who insulted some Filipinos indirectly. The foreign vloggers insulted Filipino intelligence. I've already created a video explaining the concept of poverty porn. I plan to showcase foreign vloggers who exploit impoverished Filipinos. The intention is to inform both foreigners and Filipinos about these vloggers and ideally discourage them from creating content centered on poverty exploitation. Additionally, I hope to raise awareness among Filipinos, especially those who are prone to poverty porn content and pinoy baiting. Filipino audience who might not fully comprehend the impact of poverty porn on Philippine society. Filipino vlogger and podcaster M.A. Bandia was among the first to use the term pinoy baiting 
to refer to the marketing strategy of content creators to attract Filipino audiences into engaging with their content. He writes on Twitter, and I quote, Pinoy baiting is a marketing strategy used by creators to attract Filipino audience and fans. Porn YouTubers exaggerate reaction videos to our singers, series, TV shows, and films involving the Philippines in their plotline. It's effective because our thirst for global validation is real. I came across an interesting video discussing Pinoy baiting and it was reassuring to see that many Filipinos are conscious of the intricate social issues such as crab mentality, corruption and many others affecting their country and are willing to address them openly. There is a particular Filipino YouTuber I appreciate. He consistently addresses critical topics and communicates in English throughout his videos. If you are a foreigner considering to visit the Philippines, I strongly recommend checking out his channel for valuable insights. How to start a Pinoy reaction channel. Let's start with step one, be a foreigner. Now it doesn't really matter what country you're from as long as you're not Filipino. While it may be a big help if you're white, you don't necessarily have to be white to do this as long as you're foreign you're good to go. Now obviously this isn't something you can do if you're Filipino. Many have tried and many have failed. You're just not gonna get the views. So these two reaction videos reacting to the same video were posted on the same day but the foreign one has over 200,000 views and the local one has less than a thousand views with way more dislikes. As long as you're foreign you can do this. You don't need to live in the Philippines. You don't need to go to the Philippines. You don't even need to know where the Philippines is. You just need some content to react to. So, so here's the video I came up with. Filipino Eminem question mark. Easy mail, panalo, foreigner reaction. So once you've done this, just upload the video, sit back, relax, and profit. Now you can quit your job, watch the money roll in, and you can continue to exploit the third world just like your ancestors did. So honestly, I made this video for you, Mr. or Miss Pinoy Reactor, because Filipinos aren't gonna stop watching this type of content. And the people who watch that type of content, they're not gonna watch this video. And honestly, I can't blame them for, for watching that type of content in the first place. When you live here in the country and you're, you're fed your whole life that foreigners are better, foreigners are more attractive, you drive on EDSA and you see billboards telling you that you should be whiter and, and advertising skin whitening products. Or when you turn on the TV, look at TV shows and movies, and you see actors and actresses with these foreign features. The reason that these type of foreign react videos do so well is because some Filipinos want validation. They want to be told that they're good or just as good as people from other countries. Now I know it's not your job as a foreign reactor to fix this mentality or do anything to help the Philippines, but if you continue to profit off of doing this, you're just reinforcing the idea that being a foreigner means that you're better. So how is anything gonna change if these types of videos keep being made? Now if you really care about the Philippines, you really care about Filipinos, maybe you can make content that helps the country. I mean some of you have hundreds of thousands or even millions of views from Filipinos, so why not use this platform to help change stuff? Unfortunately, smart shaming is a significant concern, particularly within the Filipino audience, which is susceptible to Pinoy baiting and poverty porn. The very viewers who are easily drawn to Pinoy baiting content also seem to be uninformed about the issue of poverty porn. For example, Filipino YouTubers who are aware of poverty porn and Pinoy baiting when trying to speak out and create awareness might encounter immediate resistance from Filipino viewers prone to Pinoy baiting. Rather than acknowledging the truth, these viewers tend to shut down such voices due to crab mentality. This is precisely the reason why important matters are rarely discussed, especially on YouTube because they rarely get any recognition, they don't get the viewership they deserve. A Filipino active user on Reddit wrote an interesting comment that's worth reading. He writes, God, I hate these type of YouTubers. I actually hate most reaction video YouTubers, since to my eyes they are so untalented and unskilled that all they could do is just watch something and react to it. 
as if we don't react to things organically. Anyways, this is disgusting and I hate how most Pinoys are so thirsty for validation that sh like this ends up thriving. Another Filipino user on Reddit writes, don't really understand why people are mad at vloggers like these. It's not their fault that Filipinos are thirsty for validation. They just follow their stats and the YouTube algorithm and provide the content that would get them views. Pinoy baiting exists because Filipinos keep on grasping the bait. That's purely a Filipino problem and totally not on these vloggers. The problem with foreign vloggers is that they tend to highlight and sometimes exaggerate the positive aspects of the Philippines to attract views rather than offering an honest assessment. This emphasis on the positive aspects might contribute to overlooking or downplaying important issues within the Philippines, issues that are important to Filipinos, like poverty, corruption, and so on. The challenge with some Filipinos falling for foreign vloggers' content is that instead of recognizing their role in the issue, meaning instead of acknowledging that they are partially responsible for perpetuating Pinoy baiting phenomenon, they tend to justify and make excuses, like no, we are not seeking global validation. This tendency contributes to the persistence of the Pinoy baiting phenomenon. It's important to note that YouTube is not my primary source of income and I don't depend on it for our everyday necessities. If you closely observe my content, you will see that my focus is on significant topics that impact the Philippines, like tourism, culture, history, traditions, and other social issues. I do this with the future well-being of my family, myself, my wife, and my future children in mind. The Philippines is like a second home to me. We have properties here. So if something happens to the economy of the Philippines as a result of less tourists coming into the country, that is going to affect um, our business here in the Philippines. Now let's talk about the top 10 foreign vloggers who insult Filipinos. Number one, Nas Daily. Here is a summary of how he insulted Filipinos. He offered a fake online course on the ancient tattoo art without Wang Odd's knowledge. Wang Odd's niece exposed his fraud, stating, Hello everyone. Wang Ad Academy is not real. I spoke to her and she said she did not understand what the translator were saying. Hello everyone. Wang Ad Academy is not real. I spoke to her and she said she did not understand what the translators were saying. I'm sorry to tell you she will not be joining the NAS Daily. I know you have good intentions of sharing our culture to the next generation. However, our village concern is that some people are profiting and exploiting our art and culture. I know you spoke to someone and gave some money and will share profits. But Apple Wang Odd is not aware of your contract. Hope you sort this out. Although Nas Daily tried to profit by exploiting other people, I don't entirely blame him. He's a victim of a system aka capitalism, that is designed to exploit human beings for profit. When it comes to generating profit or making money, values such as ethics, decency, and so on are thrown out of the window. These values don't matter because they don't translate into money. They don't make money. Exploitation makes money. Number two, music game news. As his YouTube channel name suggests, he used to focus on games and game news. However, he did not get many views. He's probably noticed another vlogger who runs a successful YouTube channel that caters to content about the Philippines. He's been creating reaction videos about Filipino singers, players, celebrities, and everything related to the Philippines. He just forces himself to be amazed by everything Filipino just to get views and engagements from Filipino viewers who are prone to Pinoy baiting. He cannot be held responsible for producing reaction videos about the Philippines. 
Essentially, he is just meeting the demand of the Filipino audience. The reason he persists in reacting to various aspects of the Philippines is because Filipino viewers see content that make them feel good about themselves. Again, keep in mind that the Filipino audience's preference for content that boosts their national pride and self-esteem also plays a significant role in sustaining this type of content. Both the foreign content creators, meaning those foreigners who make reaction videos about the Philippines, and Filipino audiences are both responsible for perpetuating the you know, baiting phenomenon. Number three, REL. They used to make reaction videos about other countries, including their home country, America. However, they shift their focus on Filipino content because it was lucrative. Number four, finding Tom. Number five, happy reactions. Number six, Bubs and Doe. Number seven, and the studio Philippines. Number eight, Waleska Herrera. Number nine, it's Kevo. And number 10, double the reaction. It's worth concluding this video with a quote from a Filipino writer. She writes, Filipinos should recognize their power and reward authentic and sincere efforts to understand and appreciate our culture over mere pandering and surface flattery. At the core of Filipinos' vulnerability to being baited and gaslighted is a long-standing need to be respected and valued by others, something we've been deprived of through centuries of colonization. Instead of seeking foreign validation, we should learn how to validate ourselves and each other. If we genuinely love ourselves and our culture, we will hold much higher standards for those who deserve our clout.